steady state approximation. So steady state approximation is a method that we use to derive the overall rate law when either the relative speed of the elementary reactions cannot be identified or when the slowest step in those reaction mechanisms has an intermediate as a reactant. So let's look at the following elementary steps in this mechanism. And notice that our slow step is in the middle. Um, notice that number one could be written 2A. Notice we have an equilibrium sign. That's a little different. Gives us X. So 2A is an equilibrium with X. So my first question for you is looking at these three mechanisms. What are the intermediates in this example? Remember, an intermediate is formed and used. So notice that double A gives us X. So X is an intermediate, as well as Y. So as soon as X is produced, Y is used, excuse me, as soon as X is produced, it's used to create Y. Once you have some Y, then you can use that intermediate to produce D. Now, you just learned that we could look at that slow step and write the expected rate law. So the expected rate law can be rate is equal to, I'm going to put K2 to refer it to the second equation, and our two reactants in the second equation, concentration of X and concentration of B. Now, something that you don't know is that a rate law for the overall reaction cannot have an intermediate in it. So this guy cannot be there. So we need to find a way to substitute the reactants for concentration of X. So let's notice that first reaction is in equilibrium. So remember from equilibrium, we can say the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So you're creating your product as quickly as it's being used, reaches an equilibrium concentration, and it's going back. Now, the rate for the reactant side, I'm going to write K, and I'm just going to use a letter F for forward. We have double A, so I'm going to say the concentration of A squared is equal to the rate constant for the reverse. I'm just going to write an R, and that is the concentration of X, one of our intermediates. So I'm just going to gather my terms on one side. I just want concentration of X is equal to, so I've divided both sides by KR and times the concentration of A squared. So now we're ready to write the overall rate law. So let me remind you of what you wrote as the expected rate law was, we looked at the second reaction and we wrote K2 is equal to, we said the concentration of X and the concentration of B. And then we looked at the equilibrium and we said delta X is equal to the rate of the forward reaction divided by the rate of the reverse reaction times the concentration of A squared. So what we'd like to do now is substitute the rate constant times A squared in for X. So at this point, we have rate is equal to K for the second reaction 
or concentration of x, we have k of the forward divided by k of the reverse times a squared multiplied by the concentration, I don't need parentheses, of b. I'm going to draw that arrow over just in case somebody needs it. Now, one of the tricks is to take that complicated k and just let's make it a plain old k is going to be equal to k2 times kf divided by k. That's a lowercase kr. And now we're ready to write our overall rate law. So the rate law for the whole reaction is the rate is equal to k times a squared times the concentration of b. And that is the correct rate law. Let's look at it one more time using some compounds. We have the following mechanism for the reaction. And we have, again, two fast steps and one slow step. So the first thing I want you to do, the question is determine the rate law, is what are the intermediates and what's the expected rate law? So let's first do intermediates. Our intermediates are formed and then consumed. So notice our intermediate is this NO2F2. And notice we have elemental F. I should just say F as an atom. And I believe that's it. So we're determining the overall rate law. The expected rate law, we know that usually we can take the slow step and say the rate is equal to, again, I'm going to put a subscript 2 to refer it to the second reaction. And we can use the molecularity to determine the rate law. So it's just the NO2F2 to the first power. But because our intermediates are NO2F2, our other intermediate was F, this cannot be. We have to make some substitutions. So that's what you want to be aware of. So notice that we have that equilibrium again in that first reaction. So the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse reaction. So I'm going to write rate forward equals the rate of the reverse. The forward reaction, I'll put K sub F, is the concentration of NO2 times the concentration of F2. And the reverse reaction, I'll put Kr, is the concentration of NO2F2, which is our intermediate. So that's what we're trying to isolate so that we can find the correct rate law, because you cannot have an intermediate concentration in the overall rate law. So NO2F2 is equal to, again, I'm dividing by the rate constant for the reverse reaction times the two concentrations, which are reactants. And now I can make some substitutions. Remember, our expected rate law was rate is equal to K2 times NO2F2. So our next step is to make a substitution. We're going to put all of that in for my NO2F2. So I'm going to do that on my next screen. I have one more. So at this point, we have rate is equal to K2 times 
There's my K forward reaction. There's my rate constant for the reverse reaction times NO2 concentration, F2 concentration. So one more time, we're going to just say plain old K is the value of the rate constant for K2 times KF divided by KR. So our final rate law is equal to K times the concentration of NO2 times the concentration of F2, which are two reactants, and that is our overall rate law. Smiley face. <laughs>